Upon This Rock. I'm Jean Marie, your host. Upon This Rock is a program and a ministry designed to showcase various apostolates or outreaches that are doing a wonderful work here in our local community, nationally, and throughout the world. On the program, I have a very special guest, Father Robert DeGrandis. Father DeGrandis was ordained a Roman Catholic priest in 1959. He is a member of the Society of St. Joseph. He has written over 30 books, which have been translated into over 15 languages. His international healing ministry has taken him to over 40 countries. Our topic is We Are in Spiritual Warfare. Welcome to the program, Father DeGrandis. It's such a privilege to have you on the show Thank once you, again. Jamie. You know, you've been on the program several times, and you're back by popular demand. We received so many letters from different people writing, saying how they were healed and how they were touched through the program, that they asked to have you back on again. And it's really very a privilege for me to have you on the show today. Well, that, that's encouraging. Very, very encouraging. Well, before we get into our topic of being in spiritual warfare, how would you describe your main ministry, Father? My main ministry is working with priests encouraging them to be open to the charisms of the Holy Spirit, especially the, the charism of healing. In our day and time, uh, there's such a tremendous need for healing, and it's an ordinary part of Catholic life, but we have not really emphasized it like we should. And in our day and time, when people are really looking for some type of help spiritually, emotionally, relationally, psychologically, physically, uh, we as clergy need to provide the power of the Holy Spirit for them. That's very important to have the priest providing the very important aspects of our faith, the sacraments and so forth, and we're going to get into that. But I wanted to go into the topic of spiritual warfare. First of all, some of our viewers might not even know what does that mean, spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is the conflict between light and darkness. If we look in the let first letter of John, chapter 2, he says, now this is the message we've heard from him, Jesus, and proclaim to you, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. So that the forces of evil are characterized by darkness and the forces of good uh, by the light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And if you look at people who are really walking with the Lord, there's a, there's a lightsomeness about their face. If you look at people that are heavy into vice or crime, you'll notice a certain tightness on their face and a certain darkness. If you really look for it, you can see it. Yes, that's so true. So we're dealing with something, you know, you'd, you'd think is spiritual, but it, it has physical ramifications. I believe that because the Lord says, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they would see that and glorify your Heavenly Father. Sometimes when I see a priest praying sometimes and he's really filled with the Spirit, I actually see a glow, a physical glow, like the aura or a halo mm -hmm. around him. Many people will say that. We, oh, I saw a light uh, around you as you prayed over that person. So it's, it's something very real. And we all want to walk in the light. We want to walk with the Lord. And uh, Star Wars is really a story of the conflict between light and darkness, good and evil. It's coming out now with Star Wars 2. So that's the main uh, thrust of that movie. And uh, I think we see it in other, other uh, media. Well, we're talking about spiritual warfare today, Father. Yeah. And I know you have a wonderful acrostic with the word warfare that you're going to share with us so we can right. remember things that we can do. Right. Psychologists tell us we forget almost 95% of what we hear and that's pretty bad for those of us who preach. So I, what I try to do is use memory devices to help people keep key concepts. So as we talk about spiritual warfare, let's use the word warfare, and uh, each letter will occasion remind us of a concept that we can keep for tomorrow. So tomorrow is a warfare. Let's see, W of warfare stands for the Word of God. The Word of God speaks of the conflict between good and evil, uh, between light and darkness, between Satan and, and God, if we're going to come to the bottom line. We see Jesus uh, attacked by Satan in the temptations. So we, there's this conflict. In Mark 16, 18, Jesus said, these are the signs that will follow believers. 
In my name they'll cast out demons. Uh, in Matthew 10, 8, Jesus says, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons. So that the ministry of light is to uh, really overcome the powers of darkness. And when you say cast out demons, is that something that only priests can do, or can lay no, people do that also? No, and Mark 16, 18 says, in my name, believers, believers, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the power and the authority of a believer to cast out, especially within yourself. Say someone gets involved in uh, seances, and they uh, find themselves being depressed, and quite possibly they have picked up some contamination, they can cast that out. In the name of Jesus, I bind you, uh, Spirit, and I cast you out. Which brings us to the second letter, A, attacks. We can expect attacks from the powers of darkness. Many people say before they go to a prayer meeting, they'll, they'll suddenly get sick for no per, uh, reason at all. They get a headache or they get an upset stomach and they say, this must be an attack. And so they, they pray and they loose themselves from that so that we, are, uh, we can be attacked uh, by the powers of darkness. In the lives of the saints, this is even physical. In the life of Padre Pio, it was something very, very physical. Which brings us to a very important point. If you want to know about the powers of darkness, go to those who specialize in the power of light, the saints. The saints were filled with the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they, they did the most conflict against the powers of darkness. How do we handle an attack if we get an attack? Father? Well, by, by prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's your, there's an, in the name of, I bind you spirit, and I cast you out of me. It's, uh, it sounds theoretical, but if you're in the physical situation, it's, it's something very, very real. And that would bring us to the R of warfare, repent. One of the ways that we can open up to darkness is by continual sin. And so the Lord calls us to repent continual repentance so that we can ca uh, not be open and cast out from ourselves anything of darkness that uh, has gotten in there through repeated sin. That's why we as Catholics have the sacrament of reconciliation. Yes, that's the most powerful way of setting yourself free is by the sacrament of reconciliation, confession. James 5 says, confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. Well, within the Catholic framework, the man deputed for that is the priest, and he's the official representative of the Christian community. So we go to confession. We make the sacrament of reconciliation. Father I Dr. myself. Dennis, could you share that story about the drug addict who was actually slain in the spirit, going to confession and delivered? That's powerful. Uh, yeah, this was a friend of mine. He was 24 years old. He was a drug addict and alcoholic, and he was just disgusted with himself. He looked in the mirror one day. Uh, in, as he was at a party and he happened to go to the men's room, he just looked himself, at himself in the mirror and was so disgusted. So he, next day he took himself to his parish church. Now all the time his mother was praying, so here's where the, I think the inspiration came from. And he went to the sacrament of reconciliation and he confessed his sins. The priest absolved him. There was a formula we used through the ministry of the uh, church, I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the power of that threw him against the wall of the confessional, and he was totally healed of drug addiction and alcoholism. Now he goes to daily mass and spends an hour in prayer a day. That's powerful. That's the power of the sacraments. The power of the sacrament, yes. And if you go to a psychiatrist, basically what you're going to do is confess to the psychiatrist. Uh, one Jewish psychiatrist said he hears more confessions than priests do. <laughs> because basically, uh, you're as sick as your secrets, as AA says. And so uh, if you're holding these secrets within you, they're binding you up, and they, they engender a darkness, a dark, en a dark energy. Confession of sins uh, sets you free religiously, and if you go to a counselor, 
you're going to have to uh, share those things that are deep within you that are bothering you, conflicting with you. I remember one time talking to a woman and she was saying uh, this was something in her life and I said, well, when you were going to a counselor, did you tell her that? And she said, oh no, I would never tell her that. So she wouldn't get, <laughs> she couldn't have gotten healed. Repentance, we have to repent. Now, that's kind of a funny word in the American culture. We think of somebody on the street with a Bible yelling, repent, but it's something very biblical. The effort of warfare is to forgive. As I've worked in 43 countries of the world, in every country I ask myself, what do these people need more than anything else? And in every country, it's the same thing. People need to forgive. Now, oftentimes they're not aware of it. It's so buried deep within them. Bitterness towards a father, bitterness towards a mother, bitterness towards a brother. And when I talk to people about forgiveness, most of them say, well, I don't have anybody to forgive. And yet psychologists tell us by the time you're 35, you have three and a half million sense impressions, some good, some neutral, some painful. Those painful sense perceptions engender negative energy that can work against you and make, even make you sick physically, psychologically, uh, spiritually. So forgiveness is a big part of spiritual warfare. And of healing. I remember on a previous show when we did Healing the Dysfunctional Family, you had mentioned some people who were actually healed of cancer after they were led through the forgiveness prayer. Yes, I've seen cancer heal through uh, heavy forgiveness. I've seen uh, heart problems, diabetes, almost every illness healed. Uh, not every numerical one, but every type of illness uh, healed through heavy forgiveness. And you usually put them on a 30-day forgiveness prayer, right? Yes, That's it's a 30-day plan uh, of intense praying for forgiveness. And what that does, it, it takes about 20 days before the subconscious mind opens up. And especially from childhood, painful memories will surface and we need to forgive. I remember preaching in a church one night and I was talking about forgiveness and I remembered my eighth grade teacher that I hated with a passion. And in all these years of talking about forgiveness had never thought of her. And then I went into prayer to ask for the grace to forgive her for 180 days of torture in, <laughs> her eighth, in my eighth grade class. So forgiveness is very important. If you can't forgive, you better be careful, you may get sick. Well, Father, I see we're halfway through our program, and I want to let our viewers know to get your pen and paper ready, because at the end of the program, we're going to be happy to give you a free copy of St. Michael the Archangel's Prayer. You probably are noticing his picture behind the acrostic. And so get your pen ready and jot down that address. So that's going to bring us to the next letter. In the Which word. is A, what is your attitude your attitude towards life. They did a study recently of, of business women and asked them uh, many questions. One of the questions, do you believe in heaven? 70% said, yes, I believe in heaven. They asked, do you believe in hell? 60% said, no, I don't believe in hell. So your attitude towards life, what is it? Is it we're here for a short time to live a good life, to walk with the Lord? and to enter into eternal life forever and ever? Or if we miss that, into eternal punishment? In the, United, in the United States, we don't talk about this. This is not socially accepted anymore to talk about heaven and hell. But if your attitude is, yeah, I'm seeking eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ, this is going to mean something to you. If you're not saying, you say, well, I don't believe in the afterlife, well, then you can do anything you want, and most people do. <laughs> they go out and have a what they would say is a, a good time. But if, you're, if you really believe, according to the preaching of Jesus, that we here, have here a short time, we have no lasting dwelling place, then you're really going to get into walking in the light through prayer, through reading of God's Word, which is so powerful, huh? uh, through participating in a church act in church and join other Christians in praise and worship, growing in the gifts of the Spirit, doing spiritual reading, reading that uh, can help lift you up and nurture you and nourish you. 
um, it, you're going to be serious. That's what A stands for. And that's how you, put on, the armor of, you put on the armor of God by doing those things that you just said, mm -hmm. because that's how you protect yourselves from the attacks of Satan. Right. By doing those things. We have the power and the authority as believers, and we should use it. The R of warfare is to renew your commitment to Jesus Christ. That needs to be da done daily in our daily prayer. Lord, this is your day. Work, walk with me. Let me talk with you. Hold me by the hand. Get me through this day. Let it be a holy day, a happy day, a healing day, a day helpful to others. That's why I like to go to Mass every day, Father. I don't go because I think I'm there already. I go because I need to grow and receive the body and blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. When we pray, we're renewing our commitment. When we go to Mass and, and enter into worship and praise, when we read the Scripture, anything spiritual is renewing our commitment to Jesus Christ. And that needs to be done uh, daily, daily. That's the purpose of life is to walk with the Lord now and to be with him for all eternity. And that's serious business, and most people are not serious. Most people treat life too casually, too casually. Uh, they talk, they're worried about AIDS of the body and cancer of the body, but they're not worried about AIDS of the soul and cancer of the soul. And your spirit is more important than your body in the final analysis. Because Jesus that will said, go on for eternity, whereas your body... Jesus, don't, don't worry about him that'll kill the body. Yeah, exactly. Worry about him that killed the soul. So we need constantly to renew our commitment. In marriage, people renew their commitment every day. They say, I love you, you know, I love you, miss you. That's a renewal of commitment. And finally, the E of warfare st stands for Eucharist, the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as Catholics. We believe in true presence, and I certainly believe in the true presence in the Eucharist. <clears throat> and the reflex argument is, if it isn't truly the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, then for 2,000 years, Catholics have been in idolatry. So you would say Jesus is the biggest instigator of idolatry the world has ever known. We have a beautiful picture here on the set, Father, of the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And um, this is the power of receiving the body and blood of Christ. So many miracles have happened. When we did the show Healing Through the Mass that we also did together, you shared these tremendous miracles of a Jewish woman who was converted through adoration before the Blessed Sacrament, mm -hmm. how she related to the Lamb of God, the imagery and so forth. Yeah. And yeah. um, does anything else pop into your mind you want to share about the power of the Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of a woman who uh, got into witchcraft. She was into witchcraft very, very heavily. And uh, she happened to meet a priest, and he started working with her, and she was converted back to the church. But she said she could never have gotten out of witchcraft without daily Eucharist, that that was the liberating power. The what's more powerful than the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? John 6, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood, I will raise him up on the last day. I find those words thrilling. I use them at every funeral, that Jesus promises us resurrection, eternal life. That's incredible. And the reason I'm a priest is because of that. Nothing, there's the value here, there's very little return here, but the eternal life is the great return of commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're so grateful for the gift of the Eucharist and of the priesthood, which our Lord Jesus Christ, of course, gives that power through ordination, the sacrament of ordination. And I don't know, I felt the Lord just wanted me to share that when I've prayed before the Blessed Sacrament, you know, uh, every day since I was the age of 15, made Eucharistic Holy Hours, as you begin to spend more time, Jesus begins to manifest himself. Absolutely. That love relationship. And then you feel his power. He manifests himself. It, and you know the reality that he is real. He is truly present. And it's almost as if the veil is lifted from just from faith, the eyes of faith, and you know beyond a shadow of doubt that God is there. And over the years, I've met people that have visibly seen him, per, get perception of him, some, some continually, some very holy people continually get that, but some from time to time have a perception of Jesus in the Eucharist. I remember some years ago, uh, a lot of our people went over to Europe to look at the different churches where there were miracles of the Eucharist. And some people couldn't go because they couldn't have the, didn't have the money, and they felt kind of 
sad. And I was saying Mass one day, and after the consecration, three drops of blood appeared on the corporal, the cloth on which we placed the chalice. And now we know that was no physical way that could happen. And one lady came and said, I heard the Lord say, you didn't have the money to go to see the miracles in, of the Eucharist in Europe, so I came here with a miracle. Wow, that's awesome, Father. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. I know I had the privilege to go to Santarum in Portugal a few years ago and see that, the actual manifestation where it turned to, the host turned to flesh and the mm -hmm. blood came out uh, of the host. But mm -hmm. um, those are extraordinary. Those are extraordinary. The Lord calls us to live by faith. faith yes. And this is the greatest experience of faith to believe in the Eucharist. I'm absolutely convinced of that. It takes great, 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 great faith to believe that. It, and it's a gift. It's nothing you can and work on. Father, up. please share what you shared on the show, Healing for the Mass, when you had a rare vision of Jesus superimposed over a priest. Who was yeah, the mass. at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. I was at a convention and I walked into the student's chapel and a priest was saying mass and superimposed over the priest in light was the image of Jesus and I rubbed my eyes and I, you know, I looked, I said, well, am I seeing things? And clear enough, right till the end of mass, there was a light superimposed over him and it was because the priesthood is really the priesthood of Jesus. We share in that. He is the main priest. As there were priests in the Old Testament, there are priests in the New Testament who continue the work of the Lord Jesus Christ in a special way. That's beautiful, Father. And I know you wanted me to share about that scripture that we often hear from Ephesians 6, 10 through 16. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God and put on that armor that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So the question is, how do we put on the armor of God and who helps us in that spiritual battle? We keep seeing St. Michael on the screen. Could you mention about how St. Michael the Archangel assists St. Michael the Archangel is the patron of uh, protection. Uh, he is sent by God to protect his church. And we've had, uh, all, Catholics have always had a, a devotion to St. Michael the Archangel. Uh, remember the prayer that we used to say after Mass, up until Vatican II, St. Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us, us in the battle. battle. Be our protection against, against the, the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. Rebuke, God, uh, rebuke him, we humbly we pray, pray, and do, do thou, thou, Prince of the, of the heavenly host, host cast into hell Satan, Satan and all, all the evil, evil spirits who wander to world, seeking the world, world destruction of souls. Of souls. Amen. That's Amen. the prayer we're going to send to our viewers, so don't forget to write for that. We'll send you a prayer card with that prayer to St. And that's Michael. powerful because the saints who are in conflict with Satan and evil spirits uh, would call upon St. Michael, and uh, they said they got a great deal of help from St. Michael, and also they used holy water. Oh, I saw yes, you had Father. holy water this here. This is sacramental. Yeah. You, one of the rules is you can never use too many sacramentals. Um, blessed oil, blessed salt, and holy water. Um, the saints, St. Saint Teresa of Avila, one of the greatest saints of the church, said, that when she used holy water, that the demons would flee. So I hope that everybody blesses their house with holy water every day. And there are many, many Catholics that do that. I'm, I'm amazed how many people still have that custom of blessing their house uh, with holy water, asking the Holy Spirit to be present there, to bring a spirit of love and healing and peace and joy and, and unity into the family. So that if people are having trouble in their houses, uh, troubles with their families, I would encourage them to start blessing their house morning and evening with holy water, and they'll see a difference. I like to say the prayer, Visit, O Lord, I beg of you this dwelling, and drive far from it all snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace. And may the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us forever. I just made up a little compilation of prayers, but we're almost to the end of the show, Father. So quickly it has gone by. <laughs> Great, but it's, it's very practical. Now, what we're saying yes. is very practical, and if we could just get people to use holy water to bless their houses, that would be wonderful. And also there's blessed salt blessed and blessed salt. holy oil as well. Yes.
salt uh, is a symbol of preservation. In the old days, they had no refrigeration. They would salt the meat. And so Christians always saw salt as a sign of preservation to eternal life. And when we used to baptize, or when we baptized in the old days, we'd put a little salt in the mouth of the baby and ask that, that the Lord preserve this child to eternal life. Well, Father, we're down to the last minute of our, of our program, so I'd just like to wind it up and ask you if you have any closing thoughts or that prayer for people to receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Okay, I'm going to ask everybody to close their eyes and close both eyes, because some <laughs> people leave one eye open, you know. But close both eyes, and let's just rededicate, renew, recommit ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I give myself entirely to you. I ask you to forgive me my sins and to heal me of all the hurts and pains that nothing can block the flow of your life and love in me and in my family. I do reject Satan and all his evil ways. Fill me completely with your light, with your Holy Spirit. Give me all the gifts you want me to have. Help me to be open to these gifts, especially the gift of healing and to follow you. Anoint me and my family in a special way today, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, for being on the program today. And thank you, our viewers, for joining us as well. Just to wrap up, don't forget to write the program if you want to get more information about being in spiritual warfare and that free prayer card of St. Michael the Archangel. Thank you so much for joining us. And may our Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you with his peace.